Hi, this is Mike Palmer, Mike Palmer Homes, making another video documentation of a foundation we just completed. We're here in the Pebble Bay subdivision in Denver, North Carolina, and I'm looking over a really beautiful foundation here. And I want to kind of document some of the things we do and why we do them. Anyway, we'll go over some salient points here. Excuse the vibration, I'm walking down off a, uh, off a dirt mound. Anyway, we'll start back here. This is the back of the foundation. You notice this isn't real high off the ground. And we have to make it high enough to make, make, the, make the crawl space high enough to work in. And we also have to have positive drainage. The water has to slope away. Obviously, you don't want water flowing into your crawl space. But if we make this too high, then the front of our foundation gets too high and your stairs are too high out front and there's too many steps going from the garage into the house. So this is what builders fret over. This is, this is what we stare at and think about at night. Now a few th things I'll point out here. This is gonna be a brick veneer. So your house is gonna be here and then we're gonna have brick on the front. That's gonna go up. That vent is a crawl space vent so there's ventilation in the crawl. Now that is called an automatic, automatic vent. It automatically closes and opens in the summer, closes in the cold weather. Um, nice part about that is you don't have to worry about opening and closing your vents. The drawback is you don't have control, but it, it's, it's still a nice feature because a lot of people forget about that. See all these pilings up here, they're called piers. Also on the side, these are called piers. They hold the structural components of the home. And we like to fill them full of concrete, uh, fill a mortar all the way up to the top. These are called foundation bolts. They're an L-shaped bolt put down into the mortar into the concrete here we put a board on top of here pressure treated so that it's protected from rot and then we screw a bolt on there and that's what holds your house to your foundation okay right, this is a rear porch here and we fill it full of gravel that way I like to put the gravel in now so that it does all the settling it has to do and it's also a nice safe work environment so people aren't falling in a hole and it does all the vibrating or settling it's going to do so there won't be any when you pour your concrete slab on there this edge here it's going to hold up the concrete we're going to put a decorative row of brick on their sides called a row lock which also ties this together the reason we don't do it now is we're going to have framers and workmen all over this and we don't want them cleaning the mud off their feet or getting the mud on top of there if you see here we have straw put hay around the the perimeter of the house um, the reason we do that is we get, when the rain splashes, we get this red mud down here in North Carolina. And anybody that lives here knows this red mud gets everywhere. We cannot keep 100% of it off your house, but we do the absolute best we can. It's one of my stickling points. Any of my employees will tell you because it's, you can pressure wash it off of there, but that red orange haze really never comes off completely. So we do everything we can to be diligent on that. Anyway, we walk around here. Oh, I'll show you what uh, what a row lock, decorative row lock looks like. It's going to be mostly covered by a door. We're going to have a do door to walk in here. But that's the bricks on their side right down there. That's a row lock. Anyway, in the garage, we don't want this height to be too high between the slab and going into the house. Because that is your most frequently used path of travel. And we don't want a whole lot of steps. We want to minimize that. I'd like to be a little higher, but we got to take what the lot gives us. This lot has quite a bit of uh, slope to it. Um, anyway, talking about the lot, in the back here, you see we graded this out. We graded, we cut some dirt out of here, pulled it frontward. We've got some leftover. We'll use what we can for landscaping. The rest will haul out of here. But if you look at the neighbor's backyard over here, they cut a major Our size bowl out there. They did a lot of cutting, and we thought that was a little more drastic than I wanted to go on this house. And also, they have a very steep, in the front, you kind of see that big hill they had. It kind of drops off abruptly. We wanted it to be more subtle than that. This foundation is actually a lot higher than this. That's where we finished the foundation. We graded and brought dirt in here. And we didn't want this driveway to be too abrupt of a hill. So we just kind of balanced it out. It's always a kind of an act of robbing Peter to pay Paul. But I really like the way this one came out. But we have to sit here and adjust it and fret out it with the grader and really, really make it work. Um, also, the foundation has what's called a French drain around it. There's a drainage system, um, there's a pipe, and it's like a, it's called a drain tile. But anyway, there's a waterproofing on the brick and on the cinder block. So that if any water does get up against the house, it has some place to go, and it comes out here at the bottom. And that's what that marker is there for. That's so nobody runs over and crushes it. So we put some steel bars there and some red tape on it to keep people away. 
on the inside of the foundation once again we have our pier system you see how we have to put the dirt in here to keep it graded oh one point about that some people grade their foundation they just leave a big pit here they don't put grade their foundation until later I like it during the building process to get rained on and do all the settling it's going to do. And I know if I don't get a machine in here and do this grading now, the minute I get lumber dropped on the site, we'll never have a clear site again where the graders can actually work. So to me, it's important to get this done early. It comes out for a better, cleaner job, less problems in the long run. It does slow us down a few days. You don't get quite the speed, but I think that's worth it because, uh, you know, in the long run, people just, you know, people don't want those water issues. On the inside of the foundation, we have, this is a pier system. All these sit on a concrete footing and they hold up different structural components and girders and beams in the house. But this material on the ground, we call this rock dust or gravel finds. In the quarry, you know, the gravel gets broken up and they have all sorts of little pieces of gravel. And uh, this we put in here like sand. It does several things. It makes a much nicer environment for people to work in. It's all nice and smooth if anybody has to get in here to begin with. And also, if there's any ruts in the dirt that can hold standing water, condensation, etc., this allows us to smooth everything out, and it just makes for a much nicer job. Um, in the low point here in the corner, you see that pile of gravel. It's actually a drain under there. The gravel is put there for a reason, so that if any water did get in here, has some place to go, that filters it out and keeps the grain from being, the drain from being filled up with sediment. That would only be if you had a water up water pipe burst or a, down the road a, a, a water heater ruptured, etc. This here is your crawl space entrance. This is your access door to get into the crawl space. You see it's awfully low to the ground here. Actually, later on when we put the row lock back there, we'll put a, a decorative row lock here. It'll make it look better and would we'll also bring that brick up higher keep any water from getting in there but in the meantime we're going to have workers going in and out of there doing electrical and HVAC so we we just leave it like that for now and then later we'll build a nice door there nice crawl space door for access um, over here we store our brick this house is going to be an all brick house um, there's important things about the way we try to store brick you see there's hay on the ground that's also to keep that red mud from splashing. A lot of times that hay has seed in it and you'll get a little growth of uh, grass there which helps keep the mud off the brick because when they go install it later when they do the siding, that mud adds up on your house and we try to minimize that. We also have this house wrap. This is just left over, but we put it over there to keep the brick dry. Wet brick tends to run. The mortar runs down and shows, so we try to keep the brick dry for when the, when the people lay it. Um, it just works out a lot better keeping the, the, uh, the rain off it. Anyway, see this foundation isn't that high out of the ground, but it was, it was a lot higher before we graded and added this dirt. And this kind of demonstrates that. Right here we have a concrete footing. That's where your stairs are going to sit. We didn't push the dirt in there yet to grade that because we're going to have to build up the stairs from the foundation. So we'll build up cinder block there, bring in some dirt, and then we'll have the decorative brick steps. Um, actually, these are it's cinder block. That's going to be covered with a decorative stone, but we'll build the steps up put the stone on then we'll, we'll we'll grade the dirt around there before we pour our sidewalk so that it's all nice and uniform anyway once again really pleased with this foundation it's one of my favorite brick colors which is southampton uh, from triangle brick it's been doing a real good job for us um, basically a nice clean foundation will be should be framing here in a couple of days and uh hopefully i'll be putting some video documentation of that up on the website. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, call us at the number below. Thanks. Bye.